Explain what your organization does. So Springboard as a whole provides programs and services for families that live in federally subsidized affordable housing. But specifically what we are doing as it relates to income inequality and really beginning to close that gap is a guaranteed income pilot where we are giving resources to extremely low income families and affect $1,000 a month for 12 months with no strings attached. Trusting that we know what it is that they need for themselves and their families and that they're using this opportunity to simultaneously create income while also thinking about the future for their families. Chris, how did you get involved? What, what drew your attention? So I uh, had a chance to meet Aisha a few years ago, and her story to me and to many of the folks that I talked to was pretty powerful. She had a, a provocative idea. I think we should support single black moms in public housing with cash, no strings attached. And that raises eyebrows no matter what room you're in, left or right, because it's like, okay, well, first off, why cash? Mm -hmm. Well, because we know that it uh, helps people much more effectively than just about anything else out there. It's flexible. It respects their freedom. If you need a car to go interview for a job, you can get cash. There's no government program that will enable you to do that. And then secondly, why single black moms? And as she has said to me consistently, the racial wealth gap in the United States is historic. The median black family is worth one-tenth of the median white family, $17,000 versus $170,000. And we can and should take a step back and recognize that there are multiple forces causing this, but it's okay to say that there are some parts of our, there are some parts of our society, some groups in our country who've been disproportionately discriminated against historically, and we need to go out of our way to remedy that, to, to create the kind of economic opportunity that we all want to see. So it was that kind of message that resonated with us and with a whole community of people, and we said, what can we do? And she said, let's start a pilot. So we're there. So Aisha, tell us about the pilot. How, how many people are involved in it? What have you seen so far? How long um, has the pilot been run, run, running? And what's your immediate take back? What, what do you think you could be doing or should be doing? Yeah, so the pilot has been running since December, and a pilot in effect is um, impacting 20 mothers and their families, and like I said, it's providing $1,000 a month for 12 months. And what it is that we're seeing, quite frankly, is the urgency of this moment in time. These women that we work with, in essence, make about $11,000 annually. So with these resources, we are in effect doubling their income. And so they understand what this means for themselves and their family, and we see individuals are creating opportunities to make sure that their families are self-sufficient and have economic security beyond the pilot. We've seen individuals pay off debt and not consumer debt. Quite frankly, mm. it's been predatory debt that they've been, that they have gotten in trouble with as they have sought opportunities to create better opportunities for themselves and their families in the past. We've seen individuals go back to school and complete certifications. Moms who have worked retail jobs for years are now actually looking for career opportunities because they have, um, because they now have certification and skills necessary to help pivot them to the next step. Mm -hmm. And so wh where it is that we feel that we could be doing differently, quite frankly, is having larger conversations about the large income wealth disparity gap within this country. As Chris said, it is at, at, it is at um, really high proportions. When we look at black women, in effect, they make 61 percent of what white men make. So we really need to be talking about that and how we can be working together better with programs as well as policy makers to make sure that we are getting at the systematic changes that need to occur in order to ensure that families who are at the very bottom of the income level in this country have the support that they need to actualize the dreams that they put in place for themselves. So. Hey, Chris, I, I understand um, doing a pilot project and getting involved in this, and I think it's great that you're putting your money to work in a situation like this. I, I think you're going to run into big problems if you say to the government, uh, do this without any kind of checks and balances on it. Um, well, I'm a big fan of checks and balances, as we were talking about in the antitrust segment. I do think that uh, right now, when it comes to government programs, there are, there are some of them, but we need them to be stronger, we need them to be more resilient, and we need them to be more flexible. And cash, in particular, uh, mm -hmm. recognizes that. It provides a basic freedom and dignity for individuals to be able to choose what they want to do. Just as Aisha was saying, these moms in this pilot in Jackson, there's not one single thing that they're all using with the money. Some are using for education, some to pay off debt, some for transportation. And in some ways, I think that's the beauty of it. We already have this. We have the earned income tax credit. Sure. Needs to be significantly larger, needs to be monthly, needs to be more consistent. And you've got people out there like Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and others talking about the, the, the power of this benefit and putting forward some pretty 
old, even radical expansions of it. So I, I think that there's a lot of momentum here on this policy intervention, too. Chris is going to stay with us. We'll mm -hmm. talk more about some of the ideas that he has with this. But Aisha, I want to thank you for joining us today.